An emergency is no time for on-the-job training. It is recommended that you familiarize yourself with the contents of this video. The emergency response kit, recommended practices, and installation procedures before an emergency occurs. This video is not a substitute for in-depth training or specific handling techniques or emergency response procedures. In the event of a leaking valve or fitting, it is critical that appropriate steps be taken immediately to mitigate the leak. Anyone involved in capping a leak should follow their company's procedures and manufacturer's material safety data sheets, MSDS, regarding personal protective equipment. Note that in the event of an actual tank car leak, you would be required to wear the appropriate personal protective equipment. For purposes of this video demonstration, the participants are only wearing minimal safety equipment. Although rare, when leaks occur on tank cars, they are usually found in the valves and fittings used to load and unload the tank cars or the safety relief devices used to protect the car from being overpressurized. The Midland Emergency Response Kit contains tools to allow the repair of leaking valves and fittings to stop leaks, as well as capping cans to contain leaks that cannot be stopped. Let's examine the contents of the Midland Emergency Response Kit. Two large carrying cases, a toolbox containing a broad range of tools and replacement parts, five different cover cans with respective gaskets which can be used to cap a leaking valve or fitting, a bridge used to secure the cover cans to the manway cover plate. To do this, use the small I-beam that is 3 inches high and 18 inches long with one of the two small cans attached to each end of the I-beam. Clean the gasket sealing surface around the leaking fitting. Install the bleed valve assembly in one cover can and install gaskets on both cans. Set the cover can with the bleed valve over the leaking valve or fitting. It is not necessary to cover the other non-leaking fitting with the other can. It may be necessary to remove one angle valve handle which will be under the I-beam. Be sure that the second can is located so the center of the I-beam is directly under the compression screw jack. After the small I-beam is positioned under the bridge, follow the procedure covered earlier for the liquid angle valve. Remember, once a capping kit has been used to secure a leak, the shipper will be required to obtain an emergency exemption from the U.S. Department of Transportation if the tank car is going to continue to be moved. In addition, overhead clearance must be considered since the kit is installed above the usual high point of the tank car. The Midland Emergency Response Kit can be used to stop non-accidental releases. Emergency response teams should familiarize themselves with the contents of the kit and practice assembling the kit on a tank car before an emergency arises. An emergency is not the appropriate time to begin an on-the-job training course. When responding to an emergency, follow your company's rules and recommended procedures and consult the manufacturer's MSDS for the appropriate personal protective equipment and respiratory devices. This video is designed only to demonstrate the use of the Midland Emergency Response Kit and is not intended to be used as a training tool for emergency response to rail tank car incidents. This video is not intended to provide recommendations and or training on emergency response procedures or use of personal protective equipment. Midland shall in no way be responsible for any personal injury, property damage, or any other liability as a result of any leak from a rail tank car, including without limitation any environmental damage and or liability which may result therefrom.